All right, everyone, let's dive right into today's lecture on the scope of African-American diaspora studies. So this field is pretty diverse. And when we talk about African-American studies, we're not just focusing on history or literature. We're going far beyond that. We're talking about politics, sociology, art, music, and even economics. The whole point is to understand the lives struggles and contributions of African Americans from various angles. We're talking about an all-encompassing view that goes beyond stereotypes or what mainstream media often portrays. Now, African American studies is often closely linked with what we call diaspora studies. You may ask, what's a diaspora? Well, it's a term used to describe people who have been scattered far from their original homeland. In the context of African American and diaspora studies, we're talking about people of African descent, not just in the United States, but all over the world, the Caribbean, South America, Europe, and even Asia. They all share some common roots and experiences, but they also have unique stories and challenges in the places they now call home. The African diaspora doesn't mean one experience, but a variety of experiences under different conditions, whether it's colonization, slavery, or immigration. And it's not just about looking back at the past either. While history plays a significant role, African-American and diaspora studies is also very much about the here and now. What are the current issues affecting these communities? How are African-Americans portrayed in the media today? What's the status of racial equality or inequality in present day America? These are questions we're trying to answer and they're very much tied to the current social and political climate. Though, you know, we also look at cultural contributions. For example, think about the Harlem Renaissance, a time when African-American culture, particularly in music and literature, had a profound impact not just on the U.S., but on the world. Jazz, blues, gospel, these are genres that have roots in African-American communities and have influenced a wide range of music that came after them. And it's not just music. Think about literature, too. Authors like James Baldwin, Toni Morrison, and Langston Hughes have shaped American literature in ways that go beyond the scope of African-American experience alone. The thing is, African-American and diaspora studies doesn't stand alone. It intersects with other fields. If you're into politics, you can study the role African-Americans have played in shaping U.S. policy or their involvement in the civil rights movement. If you're in sociology, you can dive into family structures, social inequalities, or community dynamics. If you're in art, well, there's an immense contribution of African-American artists to global art and aesthetics. So this field really lets you choose your own path in many ways, but always with an eye toward understanding the complex experiences and contributions of African-Americans in the African diaspora. Now, you might wonder why all this matters. Well, understanding these experiences and contributions allows for a richer, fuller understanding of American history and world history, too. Ignoring these perspectives or isolating that as just others a disservice to the complexity and diversity of human experience. The less the more you know, the better equipped you are to engage in informed conversations and make meaningful contributions to society, whether it's in the realm of social justice, education, or even just your day-to-day -day interactions with people who have different backgrounds from your own. And just like that, we touched upon a little bit of everything that falls under the umbrella of African-American and diaspora studies without pausing for breath. This field is like an ever-expanding universe of knowledge. And we're going to explore as many corners of it as we can in this course. So get ready to dive deep because we're just scratching the surface today. So, I so imagine it's the 1960s. The oh, civil rights movement is in full swing. College campuses are buzzing with activism and students are questioning traditional curricula. They're asking why their education is so Eurocentric, why the history and contributions of African Americans and other minorities are not represented. This is when we start seeing the birth of 
African American studies as an academic field. Students and educators alike are pushing for courses and eventually departments that focus on the African American experience, which hadn't been systematically studied or taught before in academia. This movement didn't happen in isolation. It was a reflection of broader social changes. People were fighting against racial segregation, against systemic discrimination, and for voting rights. African American studies emerged from this crucible of social upheaval, and it was transformative. The first program started popping up at places like San Francisco State University and the University of California, Berkeley, and from there, the field began to gain legitimacy and traction. But hey, let's not forget the scholars and activists who laid the groundwork even before the 1960s. Think about W.A. Du Bois, who was basically pioneering African-American studies way back in the early 1900s without even calling it that. Du Bois talked about the concept of double consciousness, this feeling of having your identity divided, being both American and black, and how that shapes the African-American experience. He was one of the founders of the NIACP, and his research and activism set the stage for what would become African-American studies. And it's not just Du Bois. Carter G. Woodson, known as the father of black history, is another early trailblazer. Woodson founded the Association for the Study of African-American Life and History and was instrumental in the creation of Negro History Week, which later expanded into Black History Month. He was telling the academic community way back in the 1920s and 1930s that black history is American history and should be studied as such. So now you have this new field that's born out of social activism, but grounded in decades of intellectual work. Once it gains a foothold in academia, it starts evolving. The 1970s and 1980s see a broadening of the field to include not just history, but literature, sociology and other disciplines. Scholars are publishing groundbreaking work that shifts the way we think about race, culture, and history. Fast forward to today in African American and diaspora studies is a full-fledged interdisciplinary field. It's not just an American phenomenon. It's global. Scholars are looking at the experiences of people of African descent in places like Brazil, the UK, and France. They're examining how race intersects with other identities like gender and class, concepts we now refer to as intersectionality, thanks to scholars like Kimbrough Crenshaw. So as we go through this course, remember that the field we're studying is deeply connected to social and political movements, to the fight for equality and justice, and to the quest for a more inclusive understanding of history and culture. It's a field that's always evolving, always questioning, always pushing boundaries, and that's what makes it so incredibly exciting to study. And there you have it, the story of how African-American and diaspora studies came to be what it is today, a dynamic, multi-sided field that enriches our understanding of the world in countless ways. All right, let's kick things off with the concept of race. When we talk about race, what do we mean? A lot of people think it's about skin color, and yes, that's part of it, but it's more complex than that. Race is a social construct, which means society made it up. It's not based on biology or science. It's based on how society chooses to categorize people based on features like skin color, hair texture, and other physical traits. The tricky part is that these categories often carry stereotypes assumptions and societal judgments that can lead to discrimination or privilege. Now let's talk about ethnicity. While race is more about physical characteristics, ethnicity dives into cultural aspects. Ethnicity is tied to things like language, religion, and shared history. For instance, someone might be racially categorized as black but ethnically identify as Nigerian American. Yeah. Black refers to a broader racial group, while Nigerian American points to a more specific cultural and historical background. Remember, ethnicity gives people a sense of belonging to a particular group, but is also a society can categorize people much like race. All right, shifting gears a bit, let's get into identity. Now, identity is a big umbrella term, and under it, you've got things like race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, and even things like being a parent, being a student, or being a fan of a particular sports team. Identity is complex. It's multi-layered. You're not just one thing. 
you're a blend of multiple identities. And the experience of being, let's say, an African-American woman is different from being just an African-American or just a woman. Each layer adds its own set of experiences, challenges, and perspectives. Let's take a moment to bring it back to African-American and diaspora studies. Why do these concepts matter? They matter because they're the building blocks of the experiences we're studying. When we look at literature or history or sociology through the lens of this field, we're often examining how race, ethnicity, and identity shape people's lives. We're asking questions like, how does race impact someone's opportunities in life? How does ethnicity shape someone's cultural practices and values? How do these layers of identity intersect and influence one another? And this is why it's so important to get these basics down. If we don't understand what race, ethnicity, and identity are, we can't fully grasp the experiences of African Americans and other people in the African diaspora. These aren't just academic terms. They're real-world categories that have real-world implications. They affect how people are treated, how they see themselves, and how they interact with the world. So as you move through this course in red text, analyze history, or delve into social issues, Keep these key concepts in mind. They're the lenses through which we'll examine a myriad of issues from systemic racism to cultural expression, from historical milestones to future aspirations. The Vibrava Mile Daxons, the better we understand these fundamental concepts, the more nuanced and rich our exploration of African American and diaspora studies will be. And there we are. We've navigated through some essential concepts that are going to frame a lot of our discussion and studies as we move forward in this course. These are the building blocks, the foundational elements that will help us decode more complex issues, debates, and topics in the weeks to come. So keep these in your pocket as we venture further. First up, music. Music is such a significant part of African American culture and the African diaspora at large. Think about gospel music deeply rooted in African American churches. It's not just music for the sake of music. It's spiritual, it's uplifting, and it has a deep historical context. It was a form of expression and hope during the time of slavery, segregation, civil rights struggles. Fast forward to today, and you can still hear the soul-stirring vocals and passionate messages in modern gospel. And then there's jazz born in African American communities in the early 20th century, combining elements of blues, ragtime, and improvisation. Jazz is a genre that has influenced countless other genres and has a global following. The likes of Louis Armstrong, L.A. Fitzgerald, and Duke Ellington were not just musicians. They were storytellers, historians, and cultural ambassadors all wrapped in one. Jazz has this unique ability to convey complex emotions and stories without even using words, and that's a powerful form of expression. But it's not just though the genres think about hip hop, born in the Bronx, heavily influenced by African rhythms and the oral tradition of storytelling. Hip hop is now a global phenomenon, and it's more than just music. It's a culture, it includes dance, it includes visual art, it includes fashion. Artists like Tupac Shocker, Jay-Z, and Kendrick Lamar use their lyrics to talk about social issues, racial inequality, and personal experiences, painting a vivid picture of life in various African-American communities. We're switching gears a bit. Let's talk about literature. African-American literature is a rich field filled with a variety of genres and themes. We talk about everything from historical narratives to contemporary fiction. You've got authors like Frederick Douglass, who told us about the horrors of slavery through his autobiography. Then you have Zora Neale Hurston, who gave us a glimpse into the lives of African Americans in the rural South with her seminal work, Their Eyes Were Watching God. These works not only reflect the times in which they were written, but also serve as windows into different aspects of the African American experience. And we mustn't forget the poets. Langston Hughes, Maya Angelou, Gwendolyn Brooks. These are people who took the complexities of life, race, and identity and distilled them into words that make you feel, make you think, make you question. Their works have been anthems for social change and a study today, not just for their literary merit, but also for their historical and social significance. Why does all this matter for African-American and diaspora studies? Well, music and literature are not just entertainment. They are forms of social commentary, ways of preserving history, means of advocating for change. 
They offer unique insights into the culture, struggles, and triumphs of African Americans and people of African descent globally. When we study them, we're not just appreciating art. We're diving into a rich, complex tapestry of human experience. So as we continue through this course, we're going to dig deeper into these cultural expressions, among others. We'll examine their historical roots, their social impact, and their lasting legacies. We're going to learn how music and literature, along with other forms of art, have shaped and been shaped by the histories and societies we're studying. And there we go, a whirlwind tour through the incredible world of music and literature within African American and diaspora studies. Keep these points in mind as we go along because they're going to come back again and again, enriching our understanding of this multifaceted field. Let's rewind to the early 20th century. We got the Great Migration happening. This is a massive movement of African Americans from the rural south to the urban north, seeking better opportunities and escaping Jim Crow laws. The move wasn't just geographical. It was aspirational. It was a quest for economic, social, and political freedom. This migration changed the landscape of cities like Chicago, Detroit, and New York, and it had ripple effects on politics, culture, and society. Around the same time, we have the Harlem Renaissance, a booming period for African-American culture in New York City's Harlem neighborhood. It was a revolution of art, music, and literature, but it was also a social movement. African-Americans were asserting their identity, their humanity, and their right to equal treatment under the law. The art and intellect produced during this time weren't just for show. They were weapons in the fight against racial discrimination. Now let's leap into the 1950s and 1960s where the civil rights movement takes center stage. Names like Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King Jr., and Malcolm X become prominent. The movement is multifaceted. It has different leaders with different philosophies and different approaches, but the goal is the same. Civil rights and equality under the law for African Americans. Sit-ins, bus boycotts, freedom rides. These weren't isolated events. They were coordinated efforts to challenge and dismantle systemic racism. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965 are landmark pieces of legislation that came as a result of tireless activism and advocacy forget the Black Panther Party, founded in 1966 by Huey Newton and Bobby Seale. They were about black empowerment, self-defense, and challenging police brutality. They set up free breakfast programs for kids, health clinics, and other community services, showing that activism can be as much about community building as it is about protests. Now fast forward to the 21st century, where movements like Black Lives Matter take the stage. Born out of a need to address ongoing issues of police brutality and systemic racism, Black Lives Matter is a modern echo of civil rights struggles from the past but adapted to the digital age. It's grassroots, it's global, and it's bringing discussions of racial inequality back into the public consciousness in a major way. Why does all of this matter for African American and diaspora studies? Because social and political movements are pivotal in shaping history and community dynamics. They challenge the status quo. They push for change. They set new precedents. And they're often led by or involved heavily the very communities we're studying in this course. These movements are not footnotes in history. They are chapters, important and impactful chapters, that help us understand the resilience, activism, and agency of African Americans and people in the broader African diaspora. In future lectures, we'll look at individual movements more closely, understanding their goals, their methods, and their impacts. We'll also examine how they influence and are influenced by other aspects like culture, economics, and national perspectives. And there we have it. We've zoomed through some major social and political movements that have been instrumental in shaping the African-American experience and that of the broader diaspora. These movements aren't just history. They're part of an ongoing story one that we'll continue to explore and learn from as this course progresses. First, let's talk about what intersectionality means. This term coined by Kimberly Crenshaw is all about understanding how different aspects of a person's identity can overlap and intersect, creating unique experiences of discrimination or privilege. But for example, the experience of a black woman in America isn't just the sum of being black and being a woman. It's a specific intersection that brings its own challenges and perspectives. 
Now, why is this important? It's crucial because traditional discussions around civil rights and social justice often focus predominantly on the experiences of black men or broadly on women without giving due attention to the unique experiences of black women, black LGBTQ individuals and other intersectional identities. When we bring intersectionality into African-American and diaspora studies, we get a fuller, more nuanced picture. Let's consider the black feminist movement, which emerged in the 1960s and 1970s as a response to the lack of representation and focus on the specific struggles faced by black women in both the feminist movement and the civil rights movement. Figures like Bell Hooks and Angela Davis weren't just talking about feminism in a general sense. They were talking about what it means to navigate the world as a black woman, dealing with both racial and gender discrimination. They expanded the conversation, bringing intersectional experiences to the forefront. And it's not just women. The LGBT community within African-American and diaspora communities also brings unique experiences and challenges. People like James Baldwin and Audre Lorde weren't just writers. They were intellectuals who explored the complex layers of being both black and queer. Their works helped to open up conversations around sexuality, identity, and race, conversations that continue to evolve today. Then there's the idea of double consciousness, a term coined by W.A. Du Bois, which describes the internal conflict experienced by subordinated or colonized groups in an oppressive society. Now, if we expand on this idea through the lens of intersectionality, we see that some individuals navigate multiple layers of consciousness. They are constantly balancing how they are seen through the lenses of race, gender, and sexuality, often simultaneously. As we delve deeper into various topics in this course, from history to literature, from music to politics, keep in mind this idea of intersectionality. It will help us examine events, cultural outputs, and social movements in a more nuanced way, we'll be able to ask more specific and insightful questions. How did black women contribute to the civil rights movement? What challenges do black LGBT individuals face within their own communities? How do these different identities intersect to create unique experiences? And how are they represented or underrepresented in various facets of life? So there you have it. We have rapidly covered the idea of intersectionality and its critical importance in African-American and diaspora studies. Understanding this concept enables us to approach the complexities of individual and collective experiences with the nuance they deserve. It adds depth to our analysis, helping us appreciate the multi-layered texture of lives and histories we'll be studying throughout this course. First off, economics isn't just about money or business. It's a social science that touches on issues of wealth, distribution, and most importantly, power. Economic factors have long influenced the experience of African Americans and the African diaspora in a variety of ways, from labor to housing to education. Let's start with the obvious historical point. The slave trade slavery was an economic institution where human lives were commodified for labor and the ramifications of that institution continue to impact African Americans to this day. From this forced labor system emerged racial stereotypes and systemic discrimination that hindered economic progress for African Americans long after the end of slavery. Post-slavery, we have sharecropping, another economic system designed to keep black people tied to the land they work but did not own. It was a cycle of debt and dependency that was incredibly hard to break free from. And while we're talking about land, let's not forget redlining, the discriminatory practice that kept African Americans from owning homes and accumulating wealth. These policies created economically disadvantaged neighborhoods, which in turn affected education, employment, and health. Fast forward to the modern era, and we have the racial wealth gap a staggering divide in wealth between white families and black families. This gap didn't just appear out of nowhere. It's a product of history, policies, and systemic discrimination. Programs aimed at narrowing this gap, such as affirmative action, are not just about fairness. They are about addressing economic imbalances that are rooted in historical injustices. The economic dimension also intersects with other aspects we've discussed in this course. For example, the Great Migration wasn't merely a social phenomenon. It was fueled by economic opportunities in the North. 
Similarly, social and political movements like the civil rights movement or Black Lives Matter also have economic agendas, whether it's fighting for equal employment opportunities or against economic exploitation. And let's not forget the role of black entrepreneurship and innovation. From Madam C.J. Walker, one of the first black female millionaires, to Robert F. Smith, a modern day investment billionaire, African Americans have made significant contributions to the American economy, often against tremendous odds. The creativity and resilience displayed in these economic pursuits are a crucial part of the narrative, showcasing the diverse talents and potential within African American communities. As we progress in this course, keep these economic dimensions in mind. Whether we're discussing literature, music, or social movements, remember that economic factors often play a role either in the background or front and center. These issues impact representation, opportunity, and the shaping of narratives within both African American communities and the broader diaspora. And there you have it. We've skimmed across the economic landscape within African American and diaspora studies, touching on how economics isn't just about money. It's about power, opportunity, and systemic structures.